we are actually, by our very thoughts, and the Bible talks about this, what you think is what you are. And so we have to be careful not only to guard our tongue, but to guard our thinking. And when we think, we have to say, is this a positive thought? First off, I've mentioned before, God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and His ways are not our ways. That's scriptural. His Spirit is all the fruit of the flesh. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's nine fruits of the Spirit. That's God. And most of it is love. The greatest of these is love. So if your thoughts are not in the fruit of the Spirit, then they're not of God. So we don't choose to dwell on those. There is a moment, it says in her book, when we have a choice to dwell or not dwell on that thought. The thing I want to submit to you tonight is that those thoughts become flesh through a chemical called peptide. And if we dwell on them, they can become toxic or positive. And the Bible speaks about us and our flesh and our thoughts and our words. And so we have to guard against all of that and be careful what we think and what we say. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about, if we're angry, resentful, fearful, obsessed with ourselves or others, filled with shame, disgust, guilt, lying, or deceitful, if we're hiding our lusts in drugs or alcohol, sexual lusts and perversions, pornography, or even lust of overeating, you know, and we are still bound in slavery. We're not truly free. Because we're not, we haven't broken the bondage or the yoke that binds us in the spirit. We've only broken the flesh, but we haven't broken that spirit bondage. Now, Christ came to set us free. I want to turn us to uh, first off to Ephesians 6.11. Many of you know this scripture. How many of you brought your swords tonight? I'd like to have uh, Ephesians 6.11... Tell me yay when you get there. Yay. Go ahead, if you would, for me, David, read 611. I'm sorry I wasn't ready. <laughs> I thought you said yay. I just, I, I walked in when you said yay. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Ephesians okay. 6 what? 611. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 11. All right, yay. Uh, put on all... Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Go ahead and read down to 13. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers, for all believers everywhere. So and first, first, okay. That's that's good. Thanks. So the first thing we want to do when we get up in the morning, first, first off, every day starts a new day. And uh, if you would, let's go to Galatians three twenty seven. Say hallelujah. You find it. 327. For as many of you for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So here's the thing, when you wake up in the morning, we're attacked all day long. Darkness is around us and it's pushing in on us. But we're children of light. Colossians 3.10. Let's go to Colossians 3.10. That's just a couple books down. And you are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and power. Yes, exactly. Well, there's one here that speaks of the light. I missed them. Written or Romans 13, 12. I'm sorry. <coughs> Let 
the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So what I'm saying here is in the morning you wake up and you're going to put on the whole armor of God. We pray with little Christopher here every morning a prayer. We put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit. Gird our loins all about with the belt of truth and trot our feet, our feet with the gospel of peace. And your glory, O Lord God, be our rear guard out of Isaiah 52, 12. And here I'm saying at night when you go to bed, Romans 13, 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now for you, brothers, we're called for freedom. This is Galatians 5, 3. Only use not your freedom for an occasion to the flesh, but through love be servants to one another. 1 Peter 2, 15 through 16. For so is the will of God, that by well-doing you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your freedom for a cloak of wickedness, but as bondservants to God. In John 8, 34, Jesus answered the Pharisees, Verily I say to you, everyone that commits sin is a bondservant of sin. But we're made to be free men and women. We're called for freedom. Free in the body, free in the mind, and free in the spirit. And when we are in sin, we are enslaved in a yoke of bondage, bound by our sin, which keeps us prisoner, that only the love of Jesus Christ can set us free. Every day we start a new day. So we, we put on the armor of God. We take off the cloak of rod and put on the cloak of Jesus Christ. We put on His armor every day. We put on Christ every day. Every day it starts the battle over again. Every day we're fighting against that darkness. And it's trying to encroach on us. And as a child of light, we just have to force it away. That's, how we, that's why we cast off the evil spirit. When a negative thought comes into your head, you have to have a moment to decide what you're going to do with it. Boom, get out of here, Satan. I know you're not from God because you're not of the nine fruits of the Spirit. So, John 8, 2 through 11. Let's look that one up. That is. I'm going somewhere with this. <coughs> Glory be that beautiful baby. Thank you, Jesus. Aww. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Who would like to read that one for me? Raise a hand. Which one? Who's got it? John 8, 2 through 11. Anybody find it? John 8, 2 through 11. 2 through 11. Go ahead, read it. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman taking the doctrine, and having sent her to him, to say to him, Teacher, the woman is the same in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, of the man is to stone such. Now, therefore, what say is now? But this they said, proving him that they might have something to accuse him of. But Jesus, having stooped down, broke his finger on the ground. But when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said to them, Let him that is without sin among you first have the son of them. And again, stooping down, he wrote on the ground. But they, having heard that, went out one by one, beginning from the elder ones until the last, and Jesus was left alone in the woman And Jesus, lifting himself up and seeing no one but the woman, said to her, Woman, where are those eyes? Where are your healers? Has no one commanded you? Condemned you. Condemned you, sorry. And she said, No one, sir. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. The other point I want to make in this, there's a couple of points. First off, I want to talk about the law. Moses in the law commanded that such should be stoned. We're not under the law. When Christ came, He didn't come to do away with the law, but we're not living under the law, we're living in Christ. And I'm going to go into that a little bit deeper here. The law was written, and I want to go to Galatians 3.19 if you would. Say glory when you have it. Okay. Who would like to read it for me? 
Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, and you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So now we're talking about bondage in the flesh, being set free because our forefathers freed us from that bondage and, of, and oppression of the king across the ocean. So now we're also talking about a new king who came in, Jesus Christ, and he is now setting us free in the spirit from oppression. And it takes both of those to make us one and whole. We need to be free in the body and in the spirit. And what I want to help you understand is that today you can choose to be free every day by saying, I put on the cloak of, and the armor of God and the cloak of Jesus. And I take off the cloak of rod. And today I'm going to try to live by the Ten Commandments and strive as I might. If I sin, I know Jesus Christ does not condemn me. I live because the truth set me free. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't God great? Yeah. I want to submit to you too. Every man has a treasure. The bought the spirit, the scriptures talk about where your heart, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Okay? So think about where your treasure is. What is your the thought that you think of the most? That's your treasure. And if it's not Christ, then it's something else. For some of it's money. Constantly thinking about money. Got to have this, got to have that. Some of us think about other things. You know, my, your ex-wife or your ex-husband. You know, or, or whatever. The point is this. God's treasure. His word says that my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. His treasure is not what we treasure. His treasure is you. Your soul. Your spirit. Your mind and your will. And emotions. All make up the soul, and His treasure is us. And He loves us so much, and He treasures us so much, that He sent His one Son, not to condemn us, but to set us free. And I want to thank Christ for that today. Lord God, thank you, Jesus. So, what I'm trying to say tonight is that we don't have to be in a spirit of bondage. We don't have to live in fear. The scientist, neuroscientist I talked about earlier, one of the other things that she said, I'm going to have a teaching on this later. Every thought goes through a peptide chemical change which manifests itself in our body. Those thoughts that we dwell on can become toxic or positive. Every toxic thought, every negative thought comes from fear. And that surprised me. So when we're casting off a spirit of fear, we're casting off all those negative thoughts that we've got or that come to us. Now the darkness is encroaching on us, and as it encroaches, it's throwing those negative thoughts into our minds. And what we do with it, at some point in time, we have a nanosecond to decide what we're going to do with it. I choose not to listen to the darkness and dwell on that negative thought, so I cast it out. We can choose to have a positive life and live in the positive. Now it's difficult. The stress and the oppression of this world makes it difficult. Every day we're fighting for food, we're fighting for money to pay the bills, we're trying to feed our family, we've got to rush into the hospital or to the doctor or to the schools. I mean the things that go on every day keeps us so busy that it's hard to keep our mind in focus. But I, can I submit to you that you can every day be an overcomer and an overachiever and a winner. And the way to do that is to think positively. And the way to think positively is just to know that if it's not in the fruit of the Spirit, it's not of God. Okay? So you can be totally free. You can be free in the body, free in the Spirit. And the truth, the Bible is right on. And God said this word 2,000 years ago, and now scientists are proving yeah. it true. Okay, and I, I'll have more on this later. So I just want to uh, go over a couple more little things with you and then we'll wrap it up. Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
So in closing, I want to ask you this. Are you truly free? If you're free in the body, but you're spiritually bound up, do you have a lot of negative thoughts? Those thoughts come from fear. How many of you want to break off those bonds that bind you in your slavery to your sin? Remember, too, that God's not condemning you. You are condemning yourself. No man can condemn you. He can only judge you. And if a man judges you, He's he will be judged by God. So really, you don't have anything to fear. Anybody outside of you has no effect on you at all. <laughs> the only one that has an effect on you is God and you. And if God says, I don't condemn you, then you can feel righteous and loved and know that God is always with you. And you can break off that bondage from now on. It's gone. It's gone. So Lord, I just pray right now, Lord God, I break off the bonds of fear, any bond or spirit that's against us. And Lord God, if we have any condemnation, I break that off right now in Jesus' name. There is no self-condemnation, no more fear, no more self-unworthiness, because we are all worthy in Jesus Christ. The Lord God loves us. He sent His Son for us. And we receive it now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. John 15, 12, a new commandment I give to you is I have loved you, now go and love others. If we can't love ourselves, we can't love others. So it's really important. Pray your morning prayer. And if you only have a moment, put on the armor of God. Take off the cloak of Rod or your name and put on a cloak of Jesus. That's all you got to do. Oh, and Jesus said another, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We pray that every day as well. That's important. Christ commanded that we pray that prayer. So, did you have a question here? Okay. But also, I believe um, when you forgive others, that helps clear out. Right. Yeah. John 6, 56, John, uh, Christ said that when you drink the blood and eat the flesh of Jesus, when you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will abide in you and you abide in me. But that abiding can't occur unless you let go of your unforgiveness. When we pray the word of Jesus, we release all our offenses and all unforgiveness into the blood of Christ. So if you have somebody that you don't forgive, that you're angry with, let it go. Pray it into the blood of Christ. And we can do that right now spiritually without having a... Uh, the flesh and the blood, but we can pray it. I'll just pray with you real quick. Lord God, I just, uh, you said your flesh was real food. And as we eat your flesh, we receive healing throughout our spirit, soul, and body. Jesus, I eat your flesh. And Jesus, just pretend to eat some flesh. It's a spiritual, prophetic act. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, you said. Uh, we pray the Holy Spirit come on us in power and heal us now through the blood of Jesus, through the flesh of Jesus. Just fill us all now, Lord God. And Jesus, you said your blood was real drink. And as we drink your blood, we release all offenses and we release all unforgiveness and all inequities into your blood. And we, Jesus, we drink your blood. Cleanse us, purify us, sanctify us, Make us holy before you, Lord God, as acceptable living sacrifices. We love you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. One more scripture, I'm sorry. John 15, 15 through 17. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your, bear, your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. And I say, be free today, be free tomorrow, love everyone around you, love God and love yourself. Put on your armor and praise God all day long. Thank you.